Since the release of 1.35am and its third story known as The New Kid, fans have been debating once again about the true identity of Golden Freddy. Some fans believe it's Cassidy, some believe it's the bite victim, some believe it's both, and some believe they're the same person. But today, I'm going to be compiling all the evidence that I can think of for them being both in the suit together. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Let's show them the bench. Don't care if I make a mess. Let's show them the bench. It's what you say I become obsessed. So how I'm going to organize this is I'm going to go in order of worst to best evidence. The first couple pieces of evidence could just mean absolutely nothing, we don't really know for sure, but the pieces of evidence later in the video will be much more definitive and are the backbone of the theory, as well as the main reasons I believe it. The first two are basically the same, I think, but I'll go over the least likely of the two first. This one was mentioned by MatPat in one of his recent theories. Well, you can probably guess what it is that I'm talking about, and it's that in the bad ending of FNAF 3, the lit eye up eyes represent the souls and how they are not yet set free, but Golden Freddy seems to have both his eyes lit up. But the problem with this is that the specific lights have a distinct aura around them, and Golden Freddy only actually has one of those. The next piece of evidence is this low due to the fact that it was possibly just a lighting error, but it is still very much worth mentioning. Years ago, before FNAF World was released, Scott, re Scott released a poster on his website saying thank you to everyone for sticking with the with the series and everything they've done for him. Towards the bottom left, we are able to see glass of Golden Freddy, but if you look at his eyes, they are actually two different colors. One of them is shining white, and the other has a brownish red aura looking thing around it, but like I said, this could just be a lighting glitch. Now we're going to get into the more valid evidence. The first is still slightly less valid because it was way back in FNAF 1, but it is still good to I think most of us can agree that the It's Me line spoken by Golden Freddy is from the bite victim talking to Mike. And if you don't find there to be enough proof, take a look at one of the It's Me Easter eggs, the one in Pirate's Cove. Golden Freddy is saying It's Me by Foxy's area. Foxy is obviously the, anim the animatronic Mike is associated with in FNAF 4, so this is undeniably the bite victim talking to Mike, making the bite victim's presence in Golden Freddy undeniable. And even if this was back in the day before much of this was planned, it still very much shows that Golden Freddy has an associated an association with the main character, with Mike Schmidt, who is obviously Michael Afton. But another thing we get to see in FNAF 1 is Golden Freddy's girlish laugh. Or I guess we hear it, but whatever. And yes, this is just a stock sound, but this was very intentionally included in the game, and it implies Golden Freddy is possessed by a girl. Here's also a little thing that can debunk BV5, which I'm going to make a separate video on soon. But uh, yeah, some people may argue that Freddy also has the laugh Golden Freddy has, but the only possible way Cassidy could be bite victim is if Gabriel, the victim who possesses Gold Freddy, regular Freddy I mean, is a girl. Remember this image in the logbook? This little girl matches the description of Cassidy as explained in the fourth closet, and this means that Cassidy must be a girl. Some friends of mine, Shadow Libra and Tux Faison, do believe BV5, and they theorize that maybe this child in the logbook is actually Gabriel since in the fourth closet, one of the kids there had the description matching the bite victim. Since Gabriel is absent in that book, Libra and Tux believe the bite victim character in the fourth closet is actually Gabriel, and Cassidy and the Gabriel's descriptions and designs are swamped. And let's be honest, this is absolutely the only way Cassidy could be a boy, but the issue with this is that if Freddy is a girl, that would make the little girl giggle useful evidence to prove this. But if so, that means Golden Freddy is certainly a girl, as he has this laugh and a version of it which is unedited, making it much more exclusive to, to him and more likely to be evidence to prove it. It's kind of a paradox, but to put it simply, if Cassidy is a boy, Gabriel has to be a girl, but if Gabriel is a girl, Cassidy must be a girl, and Gabriel being a girl has no evidence. So to put it simply, Cassidy is a girl and not a boy, and therefore not the bite victim. And since both the bite victim and a little girl are inside Golden Freddy, well that pretty much just means Golden Duo is true. Next up we have a much bigger piece of evidence, that being both the survival logbook and the stitch wraith. Many people have dismissed these due to certain parts about them, but those points are not that great because of how the stitch wraith and the logbook truly work. 
Some people have assumed the Stitch Wraith to be a parallel to Ennard rather than Golden Freddy, but the only thing the Stitch Wraith and Ennard have in common is by design. But that, even that is a pretty big stretch considering Ennard is a tangle of wires while the Stitch Wraith is an endoskeleton, and Ennard is an animatronic mask while the Stitch Wraith is a plush doll head. An argument some people make for the Stitch Wraith not being a Golden Freddy parallel is Golden Freddy already existing in the Fazbear Frights universe, but this argument is honestly terrible. I don't think people realize just how many Fazbear Frights characters parallel or have parallels with characters from the games. There's Oswald, Greg, Alec, Oscar, Stanley, Devin, Noel, Michael, Toby, Reed, Julius, Angel, Sergio, Hudson, Jack, Colton, and Peyton. And all of them are only the characters who have similarities with Mike. I'm not even going to get into the amount of characters who have parallels with the Bite Victim, or William. And I know a lot of people, including my friend Inky Ink, don't think too much about parallels and don't consider them to be valid evidence. But I think there are some parallels that are just undeniable. Noel with Mike, Pete with Mike, Hudson with Mike, Kelsey with the Bite Victim, Michael with, well, Michael, Lewis and Myron with William. I've heard people say that parallels do exist, but never when the characters they parallel themselves make an appearance in the universe. But that's downright untrue. We've seen William Afton himself appear, and technically, Michael Afton? Not my, not Michael Afton, I mean he doesn't have the last name Afton, but he is a character who is basically just Michael Afton with a different last name and nothing else. But still, we've seen William himself, so this point is... I don't want to say wrong because that makes me seem kind of close-minded about theories, but it honestly just is wrong. And that's not a theory, that's pretty much just a fact. But with all of that being said, people are correct in saying the Stitch Wraith is not a Golden Freddy parallel. Kind of. He might as well be a Golden Freddy parallel. Because, well, the Stitch Wraith in reality is a parallel to the survival logbook. And to understand why, you just need to read the fourth epilogue of the Fazbear Fright stories. Just think about the conversation Jake and Andrew have in this epilogue. It feels very similar to the conversation between the Bite Victim and the Faded Text from the logbook, with them asking each other questions about what they remember and their names. As I mentioned in a, in a previous video, Jake and Andrew represent the Bite Victim and Cassidy respectively, but their abilities are swapped. The Bite Victim and Andrew both can't see. Cassidy and Jake can both interact with people's memories. This explains how the Faded Text knows how so much about the Bite Victim and how they are able to show the Bite Victim the images that we see in the logbook, but I'll get to that in a second. One thing that is not swamped about these two is their memories. Both of them have fuzzy memories, but Andrew's memories are notably more distinct. He seems to remember more than Jake does, and that is what more so proves that Jake is not a parallel to Charlotte. But rather than the Bite Victim, since it's made clear that in the logbook that the Bite Victim doesn't remember much. The whole point of the logbook is the faded text, Cassidy, trying to get the Bite Victim to remember. Okay, admittedly this gets a little wonky with it being a role re 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 god damn it I can't speak. This gets a little wonky with it being a role reversal, but uh, but also this specific part not being a role reversal. But the thing is this entire conversation prevents the faded and being from being Charlotte because it's clear that Charlotte has control over her memories. Andrew and Jake make it clear that the spirits in the logbook do not. So anyways, the Stitch Wraith is a parallel to the logbook, but that in turn makes him a parallel to Golden Freddy. A common argument for the logbook not proving Golden Duo is that the spirits were in the same suit, and that would mean that they do not need to talk through a book. But the thing is, the spirits would not have to talk through a book no matter what theory you believe. In other words, the logbook is not possessed. It's 100% clear that the book itself exists in the FNAF universe, but the conversation within it does not happen through the book, and it does not happen at the same time as the logbook in the universe. Another reason this is likely the case is through the I can't see line in the logbook written by the bite victim. If he isn't able to see, how is he reading the questions? This makes it clear that the, that the logbook is not physically possessed, but rather is a metaphor, a representation, or a parallel to something. But the thing is, what could it re be re a representation of? To explain this, I need to address something that a lot of people are probably asking right now. Why would Scott show us this in the logbook? Well, my question for you is, how else could he have done it? What we see in the logbook is the exact same situation with Scrap Baby and Molten Freddy separating. To explain that, Scott put it in the source code, because that was the only way he could have explained it. The logbook is, di is a different way to do exactly that. But since that is the case, it's most likely a similar situation. With Molten Freddy kicking out Baby, it was a conversation contained in one body. It's most likely that the logbook is doing the same thing. 
This conversation is contained in Golden Freddy, and if this is the case, and everything does seem to, to point to that being the case, this would mean that Golden Duo is true. Oh, and a much simpler but kind of a smaller piece of evidence is that a Bite Victim Parallel and a Cassidy Parallel are contained together in one body. Again, a smaller piece of evidence, especially for the people who believe parallels don't mean much, but it's still there so I just wanted to mention it. Next up we have an absolutely massive piece of evidence, and that is the story that jump started the Golden Duo theory itself, and that is of course, The New Kid. In The New Kid we see Kelsey, a charming and good looking kid who shows up to school one day as, well, The New Kid. He begins to hang out with Devin and Mick, two kids people don't pay too much attention to. As soon as Kelsey arrives in school, people instantly want to hang out with him. He became really popular really fast, but Devin sees it differently. You see, as I said, Devin doesn't get much attention, and when Kelsey gets popular, Devin sees it as Kelsey stealing all his attention. This is the same situation as in FNAF 4. As we know from the Immortal and the Restless, Mike does not get much attention from William, and he hates that. It's the entire reason he bullies the Bite Victim, because the Bite Victim does get a lot of attention. As implied by the Fred Plush, it seems to be a camera that Will William uses to keep an eye on the Bite Victim. I also believe it's William that speaks to the Fred Plush for the first three minigames of FNAF 4, but that's less certain and not really the point. The Bite Victim gets a lot of attention from people other than William as well. As we learn in the minigames, everyone is going to his birthday party. Mike has three friends and that's it. He is jealous of the Bite Victim and that's why he bullies him. In The New Kid, Devin brings Kelsey to an abandoned Freddy's. He tries pulling off a prank on Kelsey involving a yellow springlock bear suit, and this results in an accident leading to Kelsey's quote-unquote death. In the games, Michael gets jealous and tries pulling off a prank on the bite victim involving a yellow springlock bear suit, and this results in an accident leading to the bite victim's death. The parallel here is pretty undeniable. I've heard some people say that Kelsey does not become Golden Freddy, but that is actually most likely wrong. To understand why, just consider the end of the story. Why would Golden Freddy be attacking Devin? Devin is the reason Kelsey died, and Kelsey died in Golden Freddy. There's no other reason Golden Freddy would attack him. If that's not enough, think about one of the, one of the lines spoken by Devin to Kelsey before he even dies. That bear looks like you. Well, not as cool, but his hair is sort of the same color, and he's smiling like you usually do. If you got this suit working, it could be like the mascot of your hangout. This line seems pretty random, but it was very intentionally included in the story. It's a random detail that never gets brought up again, and those are the types of details we all know Scott likes to work with. A lot of people, specifically people who believe VV5th, think Kelsey is a projection from Andrew, but this could not be true. The main reason for this is that Devin is a Mike parallel. If BV5th were true, Andrew in the books was only killed by William, not Mike, and not a bully character. That, that's whether BV5th is true in the games or not. Andrew would, would not have a reason to target bullies. In fact, the fourth Citrate story basically debunks this story having anything to do with Andrew, because Andrew specifically says he wanted to get back at someone who hurt him, so he would not have any reason to target bullies. As well as this, Jake, the Bite Victim Parallel, is the one who truly hates bullies and wants to get back at bullies, as we learn in this in the Stitch Rate story number 8, and in The Real Jake. And this is exactly what Kelsey does. In the story, Kelsey very well may be a projection, especially since he's associated with Golden Freddy before he even dies inside Golden Freddy. But it's also possible that he's just a regular kid and he possessed Golden Freddy afterwards, but I doubt that due to Kelsey's behavior previously in the story. It's stated that he acts almost robotic in nature and that he is able to read Devin. This could just be him continuing the actions he, he usually does, because he possesses a robot. This is sort of how he normally acts like a robot. That part is just speculation, but the entire part of Kelsey's character prevents him from being a normal kid. One argument people have is that Kelsey talks about his family, but that argument is honestly horrible because we never see that family. He could just be talking about the family he had before he died. But also, if Kelsey isn't a projection or isn't already dead at this point, that prevents him from being Andrew, and that would still place two spirits inside Golden Freddy. And if Andrew and Kelsey overall just aren't the same entity, then that means Golden Duo is literally canon in the Fazbear Frights universe. And one final thing to talk about though is Kelsey coming back to life at the end of the story. I don't think this means anything specific, I think it just goes to show that he's still targeting bullies even after the story. 
I don't think this could be Revival or Fazgu or anything like that, because Kelsey seems to be going along like none of this ever happened. If this was Revival or Fazgu, he would still remember what happened, and he probably wouldn't even be going to school. And he wouldn't be doing the same thing he did with Devin and Mick, because last time he did that, he quote unquote, died. One more thing I'd like to mention before we go on to the even bigger pieces of evidence is just a little more proof that Kelsey wasn't revived or didn't just survive or whatever. When Kelsey was springlocked, we are explicitly told that at a certain point, Kelsey's vocal cords were sliced, stopping him from screaming. But in the final scene of the story, Kelsey is speaking to the people at his new school. This is impossible. What this means is that Kelsey is just a projection in either the final scene or the entire story but more likely the entire story. So that's everything I needed to bring up for the new kid, now let's get into the final two pieces of evidence. Both these final two pieces of evidence kind of fall under the same umbrella. They are parts of the series that require Golden Duo to be canon in order to work. The first is less certain than the second, because it's more so just a theory rather than a, than a definitive piece of evidence. That's why I'm mentioning it first. I reckon it's weaker evidence than the logbook, but better evidence than FNAF 1, or at least on par with FNAF 1. It's something I talked about in my timeline, so I'll just mention it more briefly here. At this point, it's been made evident that William is still alive inside Springtrap. But him surviving the Springlock failure is based on sheer luck or will to live is absolutely impossible. The only way he could have survived is due to Remnant or a spirit keeping him alive, most likely Cassidy. Most people assume it to be Remnant, but the thing is that it can't be Remnant. In the books, William Afton explicitly states that a springlock failure will kill you. But he survives not one, but two. And that's before Remnant even exists. Meaning he must have survived because of something else. And it must be the Vengeful Spirit. And it would be safe to assume that this is in the case in the games as well because of one thing. If William was being kept alive by Remnant, the FNAF 3 fire would have burned it away and killed him anyway. Because, as we see in this location, he was still trapped in the building during the FNAF 3 fire. Eventually, he did, he did escape, in, as we see in the FNAF 3 Night 6 newspaper, but he was still burned in the fire. Basically, this means that Cassidy was keeping William alive. This would keep her occupied being attached to William, and that would prevent her from being inside the remnant, the, inside the fun times. Some of you may assume her spirit is just in two places at once, but I once again don't think this is the case. Look at the final Follow Me minigame in FNAF 3. See the animatronic spirits? Notice how they are standing there completely still. They aren't able to do anything. Only Cassidy is able to move. As we learned from Henry during the Insanity ending, when the children are contained in Remnant, they have no free will. But Cassidy has free will. She is able to move around and force William into the suit. This means that Cassidy is not part of the Remnant. But the thing is, the Candy Cadet stories confirm that there are indeed five spirits inside the Remnant. And that fifth spirit could only possibly be Golden Freddy. And since Cassidy is, is Golden Freddy, the only other option is the Bite Victim. This would mean they are separate characters, and it would mean they are both two separate spirits inside Golden Freddy. Now none of that is certain, but there is one thing that is. And that's the final piece of evidence that I will bring up for this video. And it's a huge one. The biggest reason that Golden Duel has to be true is Happiest Day. But no, not Happiest Day all by itself, but what Happiest Day means. Happiest Day set a bunch of characters free, including the Bite Victim, aka Golden Freddy. But there's one Golden Freddy spirit set free here. But the thing is, a Golden Freddy spirit never gets free. And we know that for a fact. Not just a theory, but a fact. You see, Golden Duel has to be true due to the appearance of Golden Freddy in FNAF AR and the It's Me Easter Egg in FNAF VR. We know FNAF AR Golden Freddy has the spirit of Golden Freddy inside it because he gives us hallucinations and the audio he makes contains the screams of Cassidy and the evil laughs of William Afton murdering her. <laughs> <laughs> In FNAF VR, the It's Me Easter Egg clearly screams Golden Freddy is still around. The Bite Victim was set free in Happiest Day, and we know Happiest Day has to be before FNAF VR. That's also basically just a fact. If one Golden Freddy spirit is set free, but a Golden Freddy spirit is still not set free after Happiest Day, that must mean there's two spirits in Golden Freddy. 
The bite victim is obviously the one who says it's me previously in the series, but now Cassidy is the one saying that because she's here for the reason that she knows William is back and she wants to go stop him once for, and for all. She's saying it's me to William in reference to their relationship with him. But either way, Golden Freddy returning absolutely must mean that there are two spirits in Golden Freddy because if, it's, if a spirit is set free, there's no coming back. Kelsey was never set free as she didn't attend the bite victim's happiest day. The only thing supposedly, supposedly going against Golden Duo is that people say it breaks the rules of multi-possession, but that's just wrong. First of all, multi-possession does not require something to specifically add a second spirit into an animatronic. Saying multi-possession doesn't work is like saying a spirit can't possess a human, because, because a human has their own spirit inhabiting their own body, so if a different spirit possesses them, that's literally multi-possession, because that's two spirits in one body. Second, it's made very clear that the spirits can willingly attach themselves to objects. That's how Andrew possesses Fetch, and that's how he attaches himself to William. And as we see with both Glitchtrap and Ultimate Custom Knight, external means are not needed. Spirits can attach to objects or beings. So even if multi-possession were impossible, unless there's multiple spirits put together, which I'll get to in a second, Golden Duo would still be possible as one of the spirits could have attached themselves to the suit or puppet attached by victim to it, which is most likely even under BB fifth, especially because of FNAF World. Third, the entire argument is absolutely completely made up. You see, not even once is it mentioned that the only way for multi, multi possession to work is with two, two possessed objects combining together. That has absolutely never been stated. We have seen that happen, yes, but people are only making up conclusions that they only want to believe. Multi-possession is possible through multiple possessed objects combining together, yes, but never is it stated that that is the only way. Saying th that is all only just people jumping to conclusions and making up random stuff people only want to think. And fourth, even if all that were true, there's no reason Golden Freddy can't be made up of multiple objects. Maybe one spirit possessed the endoskeleton and another spirit possessed the rest. The shell, the actual suit itself, could be possessed by one spirit and the endoskeleton possessed by a different one. Another reason a lot of people think Golden Duel can't be true is because Golden Freddy is a ghost. But this is actually not true. You see, Golden, Golden Freddy is a physical suit. This isn't even a theory, it's just a straight up fact. We see the Golden Freddy suit in the Stage 01 minigames from FNAF 3. And contrary to popular belief, Golden Freddy and Fredbear are not the same character. That's also a fact. Yes, Golden Freddy is a version of Fredbear, but they are two different suits that are present at two different restaurants. Cassidy is stuffed inside the Golden Freddy suit that we see in Stage 01, and the puppet puts the Bite Victim soul into that suit as well. But the thing is, the Golden Freddy that actually attacks us is not the physical suit just teleporting, and it's also not a ghost. All it is is just a projection from the spirits inside the suit. But that's everything I wanted to talk about for this video. If you did not believe Golden Duo before this video, I honestly hope I changed your mind, but if I didn't, that's fine. All I ask is that you think about my points and come to a conclusion yourself. Also, I'm going to be doing a video soon about why BV5 and Mike Victim are not true, so stay tuned for that. But either way, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please do leave a like and subscribe. But yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Impulse Devin out, and peace.